In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about a couple of the next steps that we need to do to get our predictive model ready. And that is drawing our walls and assigning attenuation values to them, as well as drawing some areas. So some coverage areas and some exclusion areas. And I know I showed you on a video before on the CAD file import where ECAL can automatically detect and draw those walls for us automatically and save us a lot of time. But unfortunately, sometimes we're not gonna get CAD files with layers that ECAL can read to draw these walls for you automatically. And we're gonna have to do that manually ourselves. So if we take a look at the um, PDF example that I imported earlier, this small office, what I wanna first of all do is start drawing some walls. So to do that, what I do is I come to my Echo project file and I come across to where we see we have got this wall icon and if I click on it it's now going to bring up the option for us to choose the type of wall that we want to draw so if I click on this drop down we've got a whole bunch of options so let's say if I want to do the exterior walls and I'm going to start with like some concrete walls what I could do is I could start over here and I just simply left click on the floor plan and I just left click when I want to get to here. And then when I get to this point, we can see it's a window. So what typically most people do now is that they right click and they stop, because that's how you stop drawing the part of the wall you want to draw. And then you would come over here and you would select, let's say the window, and then you would left click to continue, left click again, right click to stop. Uh, but I actually kind of want to show you a little trick of how we can uh, draw walls slightly faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave them as they are and I'm going to continue to draw the exterior walls now, but just go back to the concrete wall. And I tell you what, to make it a little bit uh, easier to see, I'm going to change the color of the wall. So if I click on the settings button, it now pops out the option for the wall and I can change the, the name, I can change the color and I can also change the attenuation value if I want to. For now, all I want to do is I want to change the uh, color to make it a bit easier for us to see. So I'm going to change it to pink. And what you can see now is we've got a nice pink concrete wall over there. So I'm just going to close that and then go back over to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just continue on by left clicking and drawing these walls. And what I'm going to do though, every time I get to a point where I want to change, let's say I'm going to change it to be a window, I'm going to drop what I call an anchor point. So as I get to here, I'm just going to do a left click and then another left click and then draw across, left click and then left click again, draw all the way across, left click, left click, come across again, one more left click here and then left click all the way over to here, just left clicking. When I get onto a point of material that I want to come back and change later on, so that door for example, I'm dropping what we like to call anchor points as I draw these, so I keep on going, I can see this is all a concrete wall over here. I'm going to right click and stop there now. I'm going to come down and do another left click. I'm all the way down, left click, left click again. I'm just left clicking as I'm moving on, doing all of these perimeter walls and the windows. And I get to here, I've got another door, I'm going to left click, left click, left click, right click and stop. So what I've done now is I've drawn pretty much all of these outside walls, but there, there are windows here that I want to change to. So what I can do is if I come back to my select tool inside of Ekahal, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down either the control or command key, and I'm going to select each where, each point where there was a window. So over here, and here, and here, just by left clicking on all of these points. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click, change the wall type, and I'm gonna change them to be the windows. Oh, I forgot one up here, so I'm gonna click on it. You can also change it on this top part here as well. So I'm gonna change that as well to be the window thick. And what I've done now is rather than keep changing and flip flopping between the wall types as I'm drawing, I just come back and I change all of these later on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw some of the internal walls, so some of the drywalls, and I'm going to just go over here, and I'm going to select the drywall option. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly draw all of these uh, drywalls and the doors, and then I will change them all retrospectively in oh, a few moments time. I'm just going to, if you need to get a little bit more accurate when you're trying to click on a wall, a tip here, if you zoom in, on the floor plan 
and then you can then left click exactly where you want it to. I'm just left click and right click to finish and I zoom back out so I can draw all of these walls from over here. Okay. Drawing the walls, the doors. Again, I want to zoom in now so it makes it go exactly where I want it to. Here and finish. And then draw these ones as well. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, and then just finish up over here. Drawing the walls where all the doors are. I remember dropping those anchor points on each of those different door types that I want to change later on. Okay, zoom in. Remember, if you want it to be a little bit more precise, perfect. Happy now with the walls that I've drawn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my select tool and I'm going to change all of these doors to be interior doors instead of drywall. So you can see when I left click on these, and over here once they're all selected I can now change all of these to be solid wood doors for example and I've got a couple of fire exit doors or stuff over here that I want to change let me find the fire exit there we go so that was a quick tip on how we can draw walls faster the other thing I wanted to show you is that if you um, need a little bit more control when you're drawing a wall let me show you as an example here I'm just gonna get this wall type now if I click on the map and I start to draw my wall, as I move my mouse, you can see it's kind of moving. Uh, if you imagine it's like a clock, it's probably moving at every sort of like five minutes on that clock as I rotate that round now. If you need a little bit more control and freedom for when you're drawing the walls, if you hold down the command key or the control key, depending if you're using a Windows or a Mac device, you will now see it's moving much more freely and it's basically going every minute around the clock rather than every five minutes around the clock. So that's another tip as well if you need to have more control and freedom when you're drawing your walls. Okay, walls are now drawn and I'm happy. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna show you how we draw what we call an area inside of Ekehau. And this is what's gonna be uh, showing us the heat map inside of and it's not gonna go outside of unless we tell it to. So again, what I want to do now is I come under here, I come to this tool, which is the air requirement area tool. I'm going to click on it. Now, what I want to do is I'm basically going to draw the area for the whole floor plan. So what I need to do is I left click at the start and then I get to here. I'm going to left click again. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit now so I can keep it in the area that I want it to be. And then I'm just going to zoom out again so I can see some more of the floor plan. And another tip here, if you're zoomed in on the floor plan, if you press down on the space bar, it pans the map with you as you move your mouse. So I can see where I'm drawing my coverage areas. And once I'm finished, I left click here to stop drawing the area. I'm going to right click. So I hit right click. And now what I see is I've got my walls drawn and I've got my areas drawn and I'm very happy. Um, but let's say that these cupboards, the stationary cupboard and the comms room, they're not in scope for our design. So I want to tell Ekahal, hey Ekahal, these areas are not in scope for the design. I don't want to see any heat map visualizations inside of here. What I need to do is I come to this option again where we found the requirement area tool. I click on the drop down icon and what I'm going to change this to now is what's called the exclusion area tool. So I click on that and I come over here my stationary cupboard and I simply just left click, left click, left click, left click and once I'm finished and I'm happy I right click. Now that's going to be excluded from our floor plan and again for this comms room over here just simply left click, left click, left click, left click and then right click and now I am happy with my walls drawn, my areas drawn and my exclusion areas drawn. So this is now getting us prepared ready to start doing our predictive model.